Hey guys, before we begin this video, I'd like to let you know that tomorrow, January 26th at around 3 p.m. Central European Standard Time, a lot of reviews for the RTX 3000 laptops are most probably going to be hitting your sub boxes if you have subscribed to all of the channels that I told you to subscribe to in the past. And I would expect the embargo to lift at that time just because we've seen the embargo for the RTX 3000 desktop GPUs and Ryzen 5000 CPUs lift at pretty much the same time last time. So if you are going to find a lot of useful reviews, then I would recommend you guys post them as a comment under the community post which I will be sharing after I'm done shooting and editing this video because that way you are going to be helping a lot of people who are going to be shopping for the RTX 3000 laptops this year and you probably know by this time that shopping for a laptop has just become a little bit more difficult so definitely help each other out and right now I would like to resume to what we do on this channel most of the time which is covering leaks and rumors and we're going to be starting with AMD and their Cezanne architecture and the documents for that has just leaked or have just leaked one day before the release and this comes courtesy of video cards and from there we were able to learn that the 5900HX will have a solid 19% lead over the 10980HK with the 5950X on the other hand having an even bigger 23% lead over their own 4900H and single thread workloads. Now the Ryzen 5000 U series of processors has received a little bit more love from AMD in this documentation and I have previously covered the Ryzen 5000 U series of processors on my channel, so I will only be focusing on the things about which I haven't talked in the past, which are the up to two hour battery life increase and the iGPU being able to reach frequencies of up to 2.1 gigahertz, which in turn should deliver up to 15% more performance versus last gen and about 70% more than Ryzen 3000. So if you happen to be someone who counts a lot on the iGPU for all of your workloads or are interested in getting some, I don't know, um, casual light gaming done on whenever you are on the go, whenever the human malware won't be an issue, I guess, then you should probably have a look at some reviews for the Ryzen 5000 mobile CPUs, and I'm talking about the U series in this case, and we've seen quite a lot of Ultrabooks uh, show up at CS 2021, and I would be surprised to not see a lot of reviews in the upcoming days, weeks, or even months for all of these laptops. So definitely check out the links in the video descriptions to some channels which are most probably going to be covering the Ultrabooks as well. But right now, I would also be super surprised to hear that the next generation of RDNA 3 graphics cards from AMD is going to have up to 2.5 times the performance of RDNA 2. And this rumor comes from uh, a leaker on Twitter called Kepler L2, and he said that the next generation of AMD GPUs might have an MCM design. And if you guys remember, we have talked about this in a previous video, but I would like to tell you that I don't really expect RDNA 3 to focus to have an MCM design, much rather I would expect the RDNA 4 to do this, because we've also seen Nvidia focusing on an uh, MCM design for their Hopper architecture, but they have postponed that, and instead they're going to be focusing on Ada Lovelace. Now, obviously AMD has a little bit more experience experience with MCM designs and we've seen them doing this for their Ryzen CPUs but I guess with GPUs it will be a little bit more um, difficult to do and I'm no expert on this thing so I might be completely wrong but I still would expect that RDNA 4 will be getting an MCM design or will have an MCM design rather than RDNA 3 because uh, otherwise that would be a pretty spectacular jump, jump from AMD. Now it's not that this hasn't happened in the past that we've seen this with Ryzen but like I say I don't really expect this to happen with RDNA 3. Now with that all of the way we're of course expecting that performance to be a lot better and that's because um, Kepler has told us um, that the two uh, chiplets are going to have 80 CUs each, which would essentially be twice as many as Navi 21. And this in turn would make it one of the most popular GPUs and one of, you know, a really powerful GPU. Um, but of course, if this is going to launch in, I don't know, three or four years, then maybe Nvidia is also going to be able to uh, catch up or bring something even better. Now, of course, if you are going to hear a lot more things about uh, this GPU, 
you are going to find all of the information on this channel. But until then, if you are interested in uh, getting a better explanation about all of those things, because I know I've done a horrible job, I'm going to leave some links to some fellow YouTubers who have uh, commented on this thing and they have done a way better job than I can possibly do. But what I can do is tell you guys that if you are looking forward to getting yourself a Ryzen 5000 chip this year, it might be a little bit more difficult depending on which one you want to get a hold of. Now, if you are someone who wants to get a hold of the Ryzen 5950X or the 5900X or the 3300X and the 3100, and if you don't remember those CPUs, they have launched, but they have been really hard to come by basically, uh, then all of those CPUs are still going to come in very low quantities and if you are someone like me who would much rather get a 5600X or a 5800X or the, I don't know, the pretty much the best bang for the buck CPU, this being of course the 3600, then you might be in luck. Now, you are going to find a lot more information about all of those things in the article from WCCF Tech, so do make sure to check out the description for that as well. Now, as a last thing, if you guys are not interested in getting yourself a Ryzen 5000 CPU, then I would recommend you wait until September, when Intel is allegedly going to be launching their 10 nanometer Alder Lake CPUs, and yes, I did just say 10 nanometer, and like I was saying, we've heard some rumors that um, their other Lake CPUs are going to be launching in September of 2021. And with that, we're of course going to be seeing some new motherboards on the uh, 6000 series uh, chipset. And this also means that we might be getting support for DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5, and all of those things are really interesting. But we can of course also um, guesstimate that all of these things are going to be really expensive at launch because we've also seen um, Rocket Lake and uh, Z590 and B590 prices being really high and I'm talking about the um, especially talking about the Z590 prices because we've seen some motherboards uh, costing about 1500 euros and if you were to ask me that's completely nuts to pay for a motherboard but of course if you are someone who really likes to overclock and you push the limits and you also happen to watch uh, rip gamers nexus or rip um, j's two cents then i guess that kind of makes sense but um i really hope you don't really drill a hole into your pocket now of course this also means we're going to get access to a new uh chipset so that would be b690 or z5 or z690 and both of these numbers are of course very nice but like i was saying we're going to have to wait until i guess September for them to launch if they are going to launch in September but you're most probably going to hear a lot more things about uh, Alder Lake in the upcoming months so definitely stay tuned for all of those things and that's pretty much all I had for you guys today if you are interested in learning more about the next generation laptops then definitely check out some of my videos and what else can I tell you um, if you enjoy the content around here then um, definitely go and watch some more videos that I have because uh, you might learn some new things Either way, that's been it for today. I'll see you, hopefully, in the next video. Bye-bye.